Hey, how's everybody doing? This is JJ from Deluxe Vehicle Detailing and Paint Correction here in my home shop in beautiful Seminole, Florida, right between St. Petersburg and Clearwater. Um, I've got some new news to announce. Um, some of you that follow my channel may have uh, seen or seen on various uh, forums that I'm a part of that I was going to uh, be going into a new detail shop that's been established since 1987, just down the road from me, nice and convenient. And um, a couple days after I signed the lease and put a deposit down, I, I just had some apprehensions. Uh, there were some restrictions. I was sharing space with a uh, uh, tent shop that had been there for a long time in the same uh, space in the same uh, actual uh, <laughs> where are my words it's a little bit early coffee starting to kick down but anyway um, that wasn't you know really the problem there was just um, they were gonna do some new construction next door it was gonna create a lot of dust I have a lot of high-end cars um, I just saw some potential problems and once I sat down, I actually got all my cleaning supplies together with a buddy and we went over there and we were going to detail the detail shop. I just sat there and thought I should just buy my own building uh, or perhaps lease, uh, depending on which is more advantageous, according to my accountant. Anyway, the update being is this will probably be one of the last videos I shoot at my home shop in Seminole as uh, an opportunity has come my way and I am going to uh, move to Bel Air Bluffs, which is right between Largo and Clearwater, kind of a little north of me, about 15 minutes. I'm gonna have a beautiful two-car garage to work out of when I do work at home, but I'm also working with some real estate people in uh, commercial real estate to find my very own building. I'd like a standalone, um, I uh, have just been killing it in the detailing lately and I plan on just really pushing forward so hit the subscription subscribe button you know put me on pause BAM hit it give me a thumbs up you know like it uh, share it to someone you might know that's looking for I'm not really up and coming in making uh, uh, detailing videos but I am going to really, I mean, I'm going to have a full-fledged studio. Uh, I've got some people now that are fully uh, <laughs> on board with me that, uh, you know, have seen my channel, see where it's been going over the last few years. I think I'm at near 200 videos, maybe over now. I'm going to try and pump out videos almost on a daily basis. I've got a lot backlogged in my rendering computer, so just kind of an overview catch-up. Um, I am going to go see my mom for the first time since December 6th. Today is Halloween 2020. And, um, you know, the pandemic of 2020, don't know when you're watching this, but it really sucks. I am primarily, since 1987, I've been working as a personal trainer. I got my degree in dietetics. Uh, I you know, looked at the sports and nutrition or intercorrelation. And uh, I was going that route and detailing on the side somewhat. Uh, but about three years ago when I started my channel, actually uh, December 17th, I think is my first YouTube. Don't go back and look at those. <laughs> I've learned a lot. Um, I have a new Moto G stylus I just bought. It's got four cameras. And uh, without further ado, um, I've got, you know, I've got the Nikon uh, camera as well. I'm going to be making some really cool stuff coming up. And I've got talented people behind me because I'm not talented in video editing, if you've noticed. Um, most of my videos I upload in reverse order. Go to settings, hit the autoplay. It's just like one continuous video. It's just that it's chopped up. But it's not chopped up that it bothers you because if you're on autoplay to the next, it just goes from part one to part two to part three. That's the way I operate right now. In the future, it'll probably be a little more cohesive. Anyway, um, in my present situation and something I'm sure the title of this will be various ways to clean a seatbelt. 
Um, I'm going to show you a few options and then I'm going to show you, um, you know, how they actually work. It'll be kind of a how to and, and part of a, you know, optional ways you can do it. There's, as I like to say, more than one way to skin a cat and that doesn't involve your kitty at home. That involves catfish, which you must skin because they don't have scales. And my grandpa taught me many various ways to skin a catfish when I was a kid because I loved fishing then and still do. Let me try and get my foot down here. I've got some cord. Okay, so the basic gist of things is that I am going to show you a little bit more of this car I'm working on. I recently acquired this 2008 Dodge Caliber. Um, it is 2020, as I mentioned. This car just turned 20,000 miles. I've put about 400 on it in the last two weeks. And I found, never owning a Dodge before, I'm really liking this 2-liter. It's an SXT. It's got a little, you know, it's not the, you know, SRT which is the, uh, you know, the highest level. But uh, I don't know, I just stuck a can and filter in it. I've got some exhaust things. I'm gonna do a muffler delete. Uh, I've ordered some parts. I've talked with the muffler shop at Rainbow Muffler in St. Pete, guy Bill there. Check him out if you're local. He's really knowledgeable and uh, we're gonna do some interesting things. I recalibrated the throttle. Um, I'm going to take the throttle out and do a thorough cleaning because this car was only driven uh, 19,000 miles in 12 years. So I've probably got some carbon buildup and things like that. So again, just a side note, just trying to kind of bring you in on my world a little bit. And uh, there's going to be a lot more of that in the future. So without further ado, here I am at the seven minute mark. I know, I was just told by someone I talk a lot, and I do. It's my channel, get over it. Um, I have here, well, I'll show you, you know, kind of, I'll kind of show you some more high-end ways that you can do this. I recently purchased a Makita 5200. There's gonna be a lot of videos out on that. Uh, you're gonna see this uh, uh, Dodge Caliber a lot as it was never cleaned in 10 years, except I did wash this car. This was a personal training client of mine who's 98 years old. And um, this tool right here is the Velocity Vac. This is the actual uh, Tornador Black and the black tube or trumpet, as I like to call it, the cone with the spinning ball bearing driven um, you know, uh, 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 mechanism inside which spins and then you can either have on or off. I've got super clean at uh, four to one in here. And I'll tell you what, I've been using this thing. I've been playing around with it, with the velocity vac, uh, with the regular attachment, the, uh, you know, the tube, the trumpet. And uh, this thing is amazing for interiors. If you haven't checked into this, do some research and I will be putting out a lot of videos no one is paying me no one gave me anything for free I buy everything I pay my own way but for interiors let me tell you and you could use it on seat belts it would be awesome I also recently acquired a 2000 PSI edict endeavor uh, 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 <laughs> extractor this tool has the internal mechanism so it's not spraying all over the place it's actually shooting out it's got the hose for your cleaning solution or water you can set it at 2000 psi that's for grout cleaning i'll be setting it around 140 for carpet seats i'll be putting it down to like probably 30 for headliners uh, i want a very soft jet uh, it's got a port here you can control the amount of pressure that you're sucking so if you're in a delicate area and want to turn it up you can open up the port and that way it's going to uh, uh, be less suction power uh, the machine itself has three motors on it and it is badass uh, interiors used to be my weak point because I don't like interiors I don't like to be around other people's filth uh, germs, bacteria, viruses. Here we are in a pandemic right now, all of that. Um, but now it's actually, 
uh, one of my strong points. I, <laughs> I'm going to be doing probably a lot of interiors. I'm a paint correction specialist. I've been using a rotary since 77, but you know, time's got to change. And uh, being a personal trainer in the pandemic sucks, literally. So here also is a crevice tool, again, with the internal port. Let me see if I can get you in there. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that would make sense. Anyway, the port, you can see that structure in there. I'm really bad at this. But anyway, you can see where it goes in. It shoots the fluid out. It sucks it in. Again, you've got a port. I'll be making videos on these. I don't want to go into it too much, but they are amazing tools. And you could clean a seatbelt with them and really suck out a lot of dirt, which is important. There's the next step down in complexity, costs, all of that is something I have been using for quite a while. I have a McCullough uh, 1375 kind of, a, you know, um, mid commercial, you know, residential type uh, steamer. Got all the attachments for the floors and all that kind of stuff. I use it on the cars a lot. This guy, this guy, I think I found on eBay um, years ago and I pull it out Here's a manual that comes with, and it's, it's, it's kind of a nice manual. It gives you, you know, a lot of information. Uh, there is no name on the product. There's no name anywhere listed. Anything here. You see my light is like freaking out, the, the bright lighting of the paperwork. I hope that's not coming off on me as well. I don't know. Let me turn this off and see. I don't think it's really helping that much. I've got a, I've got a, uh, uh, correction light, my Astro 50 SL by uh, pneumatic something. Um, but anyway, you know, it, it comes with the, the little filler. Um, it holds 250, so I had 175 plus the 75, 250 max in case other people are using this because I'm in the process of putting a crew together for the new shop that I intend on buying. That's why, you know, I recently did a video on these clothes to make up uniforms, kind of uh, in just a uh, very uh, random, inexpensive fashion. Um, you've also got attachments. This is a uh, you know window scrubber with a microfiber. They give you the squeegee attachment also. You can put onto here, kind of cool. And then the main tool that I use is you know this flexible hose. It sprays out here. It attaches here. You can put on these various uh, adapters. Whoop! Well, that was the brush. This is an angled uh, attachment. So, you know, this, using steam on a seat belt is very effective. Um, this just goes right in. See this red gasket here so you're not losing anything. And it just goes in and turns and it's locked in place, right? So now, Is this the best steamer? No, absolutely not. But I swear I found it on either eBay or Amazon and it was like $30. And that was a couple years ago. Maybe it's a little more. You can use cleaners. I've got Simple Green. I buy this by the, I think, 2.5 gallons. It's a very mild cleaner degreaser. It's not super awesome, but I do like the uh, uh, eucalyptus, I believe it is, scent. And uh, I've got a bottle of O&R at the standard 256 to 1 dilution ratio. O&R is just with me all the time. And I think that that kind of covers, you know, some different options. I've got a little bucket of warm water. I have also a little bucket that's got the blue non-scratch scrubber. Also a magic eraser that's been soaking. That's important. And also this was part of some sort of magic eraser. It had a white side and a blue side. It's extremely soft. It's like a sponge, a soft sponge, but um, it really does a nice job of uh, 
when you squeeze it and, and wipe it onto things, it then will absorb the materials out. So my strategy on seat belts has always been this. Um, kind of get the basic dirt off first, right? So with that, I go with just kind of a mild cleaner. I like to use um, a microfiber on the grippy side. Yes, these are my C-rated. I have five ratings of microfiber. Uh, I believe my, my past assistant, Amy, who is no longer part of my organization as, <laughs> that's a long story, but let's just say the police are involved. So I've got a light colored microfiber. I wish all my microfibers were white to tell you the truth. Come on, baby. We'll shut it down. This is a little trick if you ever have a problem with a squeeze bottle. Shut it off, turn it on some, and usually it comes right back. You might think it's killed, dead, the seal's gone bad. It's usually not the case. So you just spray some O&R, right, or any kind of rinseless wash. You don't have to worry about rinsing your seat belt afterwards. Now, the owner of this car, like I said, 98 years old, he just never cleaned anything. I'm gonna give you a little walk around at the end of this video and you'll laugh. So, you know, the main part that it's gonna hit, this is obviously all pulled out. I have just a little clamp so that the seat belt fully extended and clamping it on that way it's nice and loose and you can work on it and you're not fighting it obviously probably this much of it has never seen the light of day um, few people have but um, my my client did not believe in cleaning anything at all um, and so this car this car is a special case I can't wait till I you know, polish it all out and ceramic coat it and everything. It's going to be amazing, but I've got some painting to do. There's going to be videos about filling in scratches, you know, primer, sand, paint, sand, clear coat, sand, ceramic coat, bam. These are what I'm installing. I'm picking up a lot of blue and black uh, accoutrements for my uh, Dodge. SRT caliber. No, it's the S S S X T. I'm kidding. I don't have the SRT. Check that out. Yep, I've got nitrous. No, I don't. It's just a lighter. I thought it was funny. I also have this beautiful steering wheel cover, black and blue. And I wanted to clean the seat belts and just see how dirty they are. Uh, he never really had anybody in this car with him uh, in the 12 years that he owned it. He bought it He bought it with like 800 and some miles on it. I lost my wet um, towel. So I'm just going to see with you here. I have no idea. This would be the main part that would be used right here. Let's see what comes off with just some O&R. Go both ways. I personally don't go both ways, but on seat belts I do. And, you know, I mean, there is some dirt. It's not too bad. But that just gets your initial junk off. Now, you've probably got... Now, let me slip my gloves on here. And I am going to say, when you're steaming things with, uh, especially chemicals like, you know, Simple Green or, you know, Super Clean or purple power or you know any kind of degreaser and you're using steam at the same time for God's sakes put a mask on people put gloves on stop ingesting into your lungs all of the you know stuff this is one of these that has the uh, uh, two-way valve so it shuts when you breathe in and it's filtered and you can change these little carbon activated filters in it I Check this out from uh, Larry Kozilla, uh, NYC, Ammo, and uh, or Ammo NYC. But Larry's got a good, a lot of good points. This isn't actually the fight tech of which I have, and because I'm in the process of moving, uh, I couldn't find it, so I had that one as a backup. Anyway, 
here's the dirtiest part of the uh, of the uh, uh, seatbelt. So next, you might want to just go ahead and spray a little bit of three to one. I think it's three to one. O and R. So here I'm going to go back and forth on this, getting the edges and the sides. Maybe go a little higher this time. I'm not saturating it, but I am getting a good clean on it. I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down to the actual retractor end. Go past the little button thing that stops it. And I've picked up some more dirt. Kind of hard to see. It's not really, you know, super bad. Go ahead and go over the, you know, mechanism that locks it in place. He probably touched this a lot. I can see some dirt coming off of it. I, I did a, I did a one and a half hour restoration of the seatbelt using two Leatherique products. Uh, the uh, rejuvenating oil which has no oil in it and also the pristine clean to remove the oil i wrapped it in uh, saran wrap and left it in the sun for a couple days so you want to always make sure you know you get the details right you can't come much farther to you but you want to make sure you're really getting into all of this material the metal the edges the corners you know like you'd be doing anything if you're a detailer or if you're just an enthusiast so I've got some super clean in the little bucket and that's my least aggressive method now I'm not really pulling much dirt off do I need to here's my soaking and that's important if you soak a magic eraser for 10-15 minutes in some warm water or warm cleaning solution you will soften it up a lot now as I went more aggressive look at the filth that is actually still left I have loosened it with the O and R I've loosened it with a little simple green and a soft brush or a soft pad but go all the way down sorry you're kind of out of camera there get the little button on both sides that stops the mechanism Look at all the filth that was on there. So if you're just wiping with a microfiber towel right now using a mild cleaner, you're not getting everything. These little uh, plastic, you know, pieces on the harness, on the belt, well, I'd like to have a four-point harness in this and go to have some fun, but uh, that'll be when I drop the SRT motor in this thing. So, disgusting, right? Now, I've got my clean bucket of water down here I showed you. That's the yellow coffee can. I drink espresso ground. I've got a little bit of cleaning solution in that. You can go back and dip your magic eraser. Now it's all clean. It's white. You can see how much dirt you're pulling. Here's probably the dirtiest part of the belt. Look at that. Look at all the filth. You know now why I didn't want to put my nice brand new shoulder harness straps on this disgusting seat belt. I'm going to go all the way up this time. This will only be in the retractor. There actually was a little dust and dirt. Remember that you know you've got a lot of airflow in a car. Dust and dirt tends to go everywhere. Now, a regular magic eraser has an abrasion that is approximately equivalent to 5,000 grit sandpaper. You don't want to go crazy with a microfiber, I mean with the uh, magic eraser, as far as abrading things. We're talking about a nylon seat belt. I just rinsed it again in the bucket, the bit larger bucket, 
with just a tiny bit of uh, uh, simple green. Here we are. We're back to a clean. I then dipped it into my other bucket with warm water with a little higher concentration of simple green. And without boring you too much, there's just two swipes. Look at that. Look at the filth. Skins, oils, body, stuff. This is why I don't like interiors. I'm going to let that go for now. I could probably go on. I have got to uh, get moving. This video is at 25 minutes. It's rather lengthy, and that's just the way it is. Do this with one hand. Probably not so easy. It's again why I'm wearing gloves. I don't burn myself. I would normally put this in my mouth or something, but not today. Okay, you gotta let this thing drip a little bit. Shoot some out in a, you know, non-important area. Now, the power of heat is also a good thing. You can steam this belt and warm it up. I know that was kind of off camera, but that's just the way it goes. Here, maybe I can tap my toe on the trigger. So you just want to steam both sides. Yeah, it's going to be wet. Hey, it worked out pretty good. So now I probably go to my most aggressive. This is the Scotch Bright, and this is a non scratch